Hello Wanderers, welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, El Cid himself, the great Spanish hero. And he proved it in that last episode during the battle here in Amaya when he went up against an army twice his number and utterly defeated them, slaughtering them to the last man essentially. And it was a decisive victory for our hero, the Campeador. So I think uh, I think Rodrigo showed, showed that he is truly one of the greatest knights in that battle, but he is not done yet. No, he is not done indeed. Uh, in that last episode, we also had a son, Sancho Jimenez de Vivar. Now, he is a little bit slow, and some people in the comments were saying that we should disinherit him for being slow. But... Frankly, in the medieval times, I'm pretty sure people let their dumb children inherit all of the time. So that's what caused a lot of problems in the medieval ages sometimes. Uh, and that's kind of the whole problem with uh, monarchies. So, you know, we're probably not going to get rid of them. That would be more of a mechanical move. And I try not to make moves purely based on mechanics in these series. If there's a roleplay reason, maybe we would do it, but just because our kid's a little bit dumb doesn't mean we're going to disinherit him. And he could honestly still turn out to be a pretty decent character. If we train him up, you know, he could be strong and a good fighter. So, you know, we'll see uh, how that all plays out. Um, We also asked the chat in the last episode if... Uh, we had any suggestions for a new coat of arms, and we did get one uh, suggestion here. Well, we got a couple, uh, but this was the one that I liked the most, and this came from one of our channel members here. And I, I really like this one because the two cross swords, uh, I believe it, within the Legends of El Cid, he does have two named swords, one of which is Tizana. And I'm pretty sure I got that right. Uh, and I think that this is just really fitting. Then, of course, we've got the cross for Christianity, the crescent moon for Islam, because we are currently serving a, a Muslim lord here. And that brings us to my next point in our uh, the next problem for El Cid, and that is that our lord demanded our conversion, which we refused. So he does currently have a reason to arrest us. Now, I would really like to to get a pardon if we could but he will not accept we need to really get his opinion of us up quite a bit higher so we've got a few different options for doing that and one of them is to challenge him to a board game so we are going to we are going to do that here so let's hope uh let's hope this goes well now, whether we win or lose, he is going to increase opinion of us, unless we, like, form a rivalry with him. Hopefully not. But uh, we, uh, Rodrigo is not smart enough to purposely lose the game. You know, I don't think our wife is smart enough to counsel us that way. So we're just going to play it the way we would normally play it. El Muqtadir takes a seat opposite me. We are about to go. He starts out with some bland moves, and we are going to show him that a strong sword arm is a strong die arm well we're not playing dice but we are playing a complete <laughs> we're playing chess there's no dice involved here uh rodrigo uh he's attempting a robust attempt at a coherent strategy we cunningly foil him though uh i think we're gonna say you think you can outthink me but he is uh, he is outthinking us he's countering every stratagem we employ chess like war is all a matter of logistics Indeed, our match marches on. Ah, he's doing some innovative plays, but we foil him. I play chess like I fight savagely. We both stare at the final piece. I did it. I've won. The game of chess is mine. Another vi fine victory on my indisputable rise towards the role of king of games. Desolate Al Muqtadir remains seated, hands on his haunches, trying to comprehend where he went wrong. I'd love to play again sometime. And he agrees that it was a good game, so that's good. But it's still not enough for the pardon. We gotta get this pardon, because if he attempts to revoke our title, we are going to be in big trouble. We don't have a lot of options. I mean, we could probably beat him if we hired enough mercenaries, but we'd have to spend all of our money hiring mercenaries, 
he's got an alliance with Tule Tula. Tule Tula? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how you pronounce this, honestly. Tule Tula. And uh, yeah, I think that that would be a pretty, pretty tough to beat. Not impossible, but I'd rather get a part in here. So what could we do? Oh, how much time do we have? I don't know if we have a lot of time here. It's already been a few months. I think we got to send him a gift. I think we got to send him a gift. Get him onto our side and ask for the pardon. I think this is the best way to secure ourselves. If The thing is, like, if we fought him in a war, we were going to have to spend all of our gold on mercenaries. Now we're just spending half of our gold on a bribe and getting him to forget all about it. And this is probably what he wanted in the first place. So, because he's a cynical man, he doesn't care if we follow his religion. He, well, he's a holy warrior as well, for some reason. <laughs> make that make sense, uh, because I surely can't. Uh, but yeah, I think that he just wanted this bribe, essentially. And uh, we're going to give it to him, so. My dear kinsman? Uh, are we related? I don't, I don't think we are. Are we? No, we're definitely not related. I'm not sure. Maybe he's just means that colloquially. Your plea is just, and I find myself swayed by your arguments. Yes, yeah, swayed by our arguments and the pile of gold we just sent you. I hereby pardon you of any and all current crimes in the eyes of the Taifa of Zaragoza. In perpetuity, you shall remain a free man. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Amir. Security at last. Uh, I think that was the right play, though. I just, I didn't want to risk uh, having to fight against our liege in this current situation here. So better to spend the bribe, get the pardon. I think that was the right thing to do. Of all the buffoonery I've seen in Wali Abdul's inane efforts to improve my relations with my neighbor, my good-for-nothing chancellor has officially not acknowledged Sheikh Mundir's claim to the Sheikhdom of Kalatayud. Ugh. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wali Abdul. You did a great job there. You're supposed to make me friends, not enemies. Who is Sheikh Mundir? Ugh, it's the son of the Emir as well. We got to get his brother on our side because he's going to be the one inheriting. So, uh, well, well, we're going to deal with it. Ah, uh, but we have swayed him. Yeah, so look, the elder brother is on our side at least. So if the brothers fight... Uh, Castile? Why are you over there? Um. Oh, King Garcia. You seem to have died under mysterious circumstances. I wonder whatever did happen. King Alfonso, he's, uh, oh, conveniently with an alibi on his ship back from the Pope. <laughs> Why were you at the Pope? He was trying to get his excommunication taken care of. And, uh, oh, his brother just happens to die. Oh, that's so unfortunate. You must be terribly bro broken over having lost now two of your brothers. Hmm. Well, <laughs> that is, uh... That is, uh, what we can expect. I mean, Alfonso is basically the villain of this campaign so far. He's murdered both of his brothers. And, you know, he kicked us off of our lands... And we're going to have to do something about it. He is, he does have the lover's box, so, well, you know, at least we've got that much. But, yeah, we are going to have to do something about this guy at some point. Ah, we did have another son. Oh, my God, look, our other son, too. <laughs> He's not, apparently we've just got, you know, our, we've got bad loins. Because uh, we have not been uh, producing the best of children here. Um, do we want to name him after ourselves? You know, we don't know that he's, you know, a wheezy child yet, so we're going to name him after ourselves. Rodrigo, great. <laughs> I mean, at this point, our dumb son is probably the better one. <laughs> like, ugh, oh well. It is what it is. You got to play, you got to roll with the punches. I'm not going to reload the save to get, like, a better kid here. <laughs> it's just... We got we got bad children. I mean, they're not bad children. They they're just uh sickly and dumb. So, 
There you go. Um, Alvar has died. Oh, he was maimed. He must have gotten maimed in that battle. I didn't see it. But he has died from his internal injuries. Our dear friend Alvar Fanez. Some people have mentioned he is from the legends of El Cid. Um, some were saying that he may have been a cousin or a relative of El Cid. Apparently he had a small tower named after him. I think, I can't remember if it was in Valencia or, or somewhere else, but he was a historical figure or semi-historical figure. Uh, hard to say, but, uh, yeah, he was uh, definitely within the legend of El Cid and unfortunately has passed away, uh, much to soon here so a rest in peace alvar our dear friend that's gonna that hits us with some more stress which is not good uh we need a new marshal we're gonna get omadon in charge of that so let's uh let's get him in there he's not the girl he doesn't have the greatest marshal skill but he's a great warrior so uh, i think he'll do a good job but yeah we'll we'll miss alvar uh what can you do not much in this case we do need a wet nurse as well, and we don't have a good one, so we're probably going to need to spend the money here to actually get one. Uh, spending all of our money. Mencia, 50, 50 coins. Uh, let's, let's get her. Catholic Castilian, that seems fine. So we'll have a wet nurse. She can take care of our dumb and sickly children. And uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully they'll turn out to be all right. There's a hunt going on and you... Oh, I was going to say you didn't invite us. Oh, but they did invite us. We're obviously dead. We're going to go. Do we need a caravan master? Let's put a uh, Umar. No, let's get... Ah, speed is probably better, right? Hmm. Oh, you've got... You know, this guy's got decent speed. And decent defense, so you know what? I'm gonna take you. Who is this? Uh Musa. Yeah, Musa. Oh, he's a blade master. Nice. Yeah, you know what? Well, let's join the hunt. We might get some good events here. Let's uh hope that it goes well. Soon. Recreation. Are we uh, we do want do we wanna do recreation? Slay the beast? Ah, I mean the stress relief is actually probably going to be useful to us so even though i would like to slay the beast i do want to just i'd like to reduce the stress here so that's what we're going to go for uh let's get out there if any interesting events happen uh i'll show you but otherwise we'll probably skip to the end of this uh so the hunt failed there wasn't really much that happened there i don't even think we got uh, any Decent stress relieving events, but uh, let us leave this adventure behind. Oh, we lose 12 stress. Now oh, we gained the hunter trait and we gained some legitimacy. Yeah, there we go. We gained some legitimacy so and some prestige. So, I mean, it wasn't that wasn't the worst. And there we go. Already home. Look at that. What do we have? We could host a grand tournament. Oh, well, I, that's a lot of money. Funeral. Oh, for Alvar? I don't know if we can afford that. Sorry, Alvar. I am tempted. So somebody actually mentioned this. Is that, you know, we got this uh, incestuous trait due to the spurious claims by our former bishop who suggested that uh, the relation we had with our wife, the familial relation, was much closer than it was. It is quite distant. We share like a great, great grandfather or something like that. So we are cousins, but very, very, very distant cousins. Certainly far enough for the midi medieval times not to care. So, but somebody suggested that due to these claims being spurious in nature, obviously Alfonso bribed our... Uh, avaricious bishop to put those claims on us uh but if we go to the pope and we can give a good impression to the pope we might have a reason to remove the incestuous trait so i'm actually tempted to do that to go on a on a pilgrimage here to rome and a pious no we'll do a worldly pilgrimage 
But uh, yeah, I think I would like to go to the Vatican. It's a little danger. Uh, we could hire some experienced sea captains. I'm fine with a little bit of danger. Reflection, altruism. No, let's get reflection to, to reduce that stress. I think we're going to do this. If we make a good impression on the Pope, uh, you know what? Then I think that uh, that we should be good there. It's not going to cost us too much either. Let's do it. So there we go. Preparing for the journey. So we are going to head off on... Oh, you know what? I should... I should adjust our thing. Is there anywhere that we might want to stop? And eh, 200 lifestyle experience. No, stewardship. We don't need stewardship. Could gain some martial experience if we go to Genoa on the way back. But after the Vatican, you know what? Let's stop. What do we get here? Diplomacy. That's not good. We can get the martial lifestyle. Oh, then we're going to take. Oh, that's no, no, no. <laughs> That's going to make the, the journey too too dangerous. You know, let's just go straight to the Pope and get our, get this uh, spurious claim of consanguineous marriage taken off of us. As we make our way down the holy road we travel, we suddenly stop as a beast steps right out of the middle of our path. A humble row stares at our holy caravan. I don't know what a row is. Something knowing, a, a knowing look on the beast's face. As if a wise old man resides behind those feral eyes, he blinks and then carries on. The rose, the messenger of God, follow him. We can't be distracted. Um, no, we are going to follow him. We follow the animal deeper. I followed this row, staying far behind not to startle him. Eventually, he meets another row in the clearing. His mate, perhaps? The two butt heads a little, but soon nuzzle each other and then promptly disappear into the wilderness. What could God have meant by that? I will soon have a child. I must make friends of my enemies. You and Garcia de Aza? No. I should put my family first. Family omen. Hmm. Renown. Close family opinion. House opinion. Or I will soon have a child. You know what? I wouldn't mind having another child. We haven't had much luck with that so far. But uh, that's probably what God meant by that, surely. A road takes us through a treacherous parts of Belchite. While I scan for any dangers ahead, a rustling bush grabs my attention. Could it be a wild animal? As I brace for impact, Musa jumps out of the bush instead, holding a plant. You scared me. Let me see what you have. Yeah, it's a delicious fruit. Hold on, what if it's poisonous? Let Musa eat it. Yeah. Try it, Musa. And you get some painful stomach ache. Well, you shouldn't eat random fruits that you find on the road. Regent is uh, unsuccessfully furthering our mandate. That's not great. But, uh, oh well. Our wife is trying our best. Guards drafted for the levy. Ugh. All of our council while we're gone is just failing <laughs> every time. Oh, well. But here we are. We are just about to get to Rome. Pilgrims flock to Rome from all over the Christian world. Some follow the Via Francigena. Others take uh, less well-known paths. Here we are, St. Peter's Basilica, where the great man himself was put to rest. I've walked the holy path. Indeed, we have. What kind of things will happen while we're here in Rome? We spend some time in solitary. Oh, we, we had learned Italian vulgar, which is good. Lost some stress. It's also good. The markets of Vaticano are bustling with merchants shouting in foreign languages. The guide of the pilgrim learned the safest route to discover the marvels of Vaticano. I'll take one. The pilgr pilgrimage becomes more worldly. Become We gain a local expert. Travel safety. Uh, Pilgrim's Guide, Diplomacy plus one, God shall guide me. Um, what happens if we get a more worldly sheltered Pilgrim? I think we'll take it. I'd like to potentially get at least one level of worldliness. We'll see if it happens. We got two months here in the Vatican. See what kind of events we get in the meantime here. Ah, we bonded over a spiritual, spiritual journey with a Gustio here. Oh, that's uh, Omadon's wife. Well, that's good. There's only so much man can pray without looking for other equally important ways to spend one time. And Pope Alexander has a lovely residence uh, that he so kindly allowed us to visit. So Pope Alexander has allowed us to come to his house. I hear some voices coming from one of the rooms, and in doing this, you'd achieve the greatest technique. I see Iremia. 
uh, explaining his craft to a group of interested courtiers who appear to eagerly follow his teachings. What an accomplished master I should attempt to hire him. The Pope would lose opinion on this. Such ex- experts feel wasted in a court like this. No, we don't want to. A person is not enough to risk the fury of Pope Alexander. Exactly. We got to get the Pope to like us. That's the whole point of this entire journey. Can we get the Pope to to like us a little bit more here? You know, I'm going to try to sway you. We're going to start scheme and I'm going to gift you an artifact. Five opinion. You know, we'll send it. We'll give him the Pilgrim's Guide. There we go. Look at that. We're working. You know, we're working those contacts, trying to, you know, network. We sta saunter past the stalls of Roma Market. We are approached by a peculiar woman. She unabashedly addresses us. My lord, you look like a refined gentleman. I know of a simply divine experience not far from Roma, which would sure be of interest to any dedicated pilgrim. Color me intrigued. Uh, we're tricked into a dangerous situation? No, we're brave. Let's try it. <gasps> Pilgrimage, pray. Our guide Ambrosia's carefree whistling is the final thing we hear before thugs approach us, seemingly out of nowhere, quite a distance away. This was a setup, and now we're isolated without hope of intervention. My pulse rushes as I try to figure out my next move. How dare they prey on pilgrims? Musa deal? No. The, the oh, the power. <laughs> this is a sacred place. Are you not God-fearing? Um... Huh, I wish we could do this. Uh, oh, we gained the Zealous Proselytizer perk. Huh. 68% chance. Oh, do we try it? We could lose 15. Musa deal with them. I mean, this is actually a better chance for a good outcome, and I wouldn't mind gaining this perk. We're going to try it. Villain's exercise. Yeah, we gained the Zealous Proselytizer perk. Is Where is that? Is that here? Fruitful Omen. Uh, Pilgrim. No idea where we see that, but uh, apparently we have it now, so that's nice. Time at the Sacred Site draws to an end. I'm slightly concerned that I not get the experience uh, as much of other cultures as I perhaps I would have liked. This is my first pilgrimage, but you know what? We we tried. So we gained Sheltered Pilgrim for five years. That's okay. Uh, let's see... Oh, we gained determined pil we gained determined pilgrim for for years, and our legitimately level legitimately C level gone up. Roma, it has been an honor. Finish the pilgrimage. That's not so bad. That is not too bad. And look at the pope. The pope likes us now. So I think you know he doesn't love us, but I think we've probably convinced him that you know our marriage is perfectly fine. You know, we, we went to his house. We were uh, a welcome guest. We gave him a gift of a book. I think the Pope would probably uh, be quite fine with uh, with that. And he would probably confirm that this is not a co-sanguineous marriage, that we are perfectly within the right to be with our wife. And so I think in the next episode, we'll probably remove that uh, trait from us because that is uh that seems pretty fitting and i think that we will end this episode here so uh so far i think that this was a pretty decent one not a lot of action but castile castile was definitely getting some action in there considering he just had his other brother murdered and uh he's getting pretty chunky so yeah we will need to deal with this man at some point but we will deal with him in another episode. So until then, Wanderers, thank you for watching.